So thank you very much for the introduction and I'm going to share data um, with you today um, from my lab where we're really interested in understanding how the immune system functions in the lung. So I'm a basic scientist and um, I like to understand how things work. And if we think as an immunologist, then um, the immune system has a really hard job to keep our lungs healthy in that every time we breathe in, we have lots of, of particles, um, some microscopic, some bigger in the air that we breathe. And while the immune system um, is really um, poised to, to try and uh, detect whether we are breathing in viruses or bacteria, which may cause disease, um, there are other things in, in, those, um, in, in our breath, which, such as pollutants or pollens, um, dust and animal hairs, which the immune system has to ignore. So it's this distinction between responding very quickly and efficiently to viruses and bacteria to prevent disease, whilst largely ignoring everything else in the in the in our inhaled breath is something that we're we're trying to understand so the immune system um, in the lungs is complex in that there are a number of different immune cells that are recruited to the lung when when there's um, in response to danger signals but there's also a whole lot of immune cells which um, which are resident within the lungs so that's their natural home so we're really interested in how those recruited and um, sort of transient uh, immune cells as well as the resident immune cells interact with the, the cells that make up the lung structure and particularly these um, cells called epithelial cells which tend to line the, the airway so that our breathing tubes we know that when we breathe in air comes in um, and then it's distributed through the lungs and we're really interested in those um, in the interaction between these resident lung structural cells as well as these immune cells. And we know that these, in, these interactions between cells are really influenced by what's going on within the body. Um, and so we know that the genetics of, of an individual, as well as the environment where you live, really affects immune responses. And the nutrition, so whether we have um, a high fat or a high fibre diet, um, our, the, our drug use or history, so if we've got a, a history of taking lots of courses of, say, inhaled corticosteroids or my, um, antibiotics. And then the exposure history, so how many infections we've had, whether we've had lots of um, different infections, particularly through childhood. And then and also exposure to, to, um, to allergens such as um, uh, house dust mite and or other um, al animal allergens. And then in particular, then we know that the immune system changes across age. Our responses to, to um, uh, different um, stimuli is very different in um, early life, so in childhood, and then across the, across the life course, changing again when we, when we age. But we also know that the very local immune interactions are important. So where the cell is located within the lung and who it's next to. And so I just want to, um, I thought it'd be useful to, to try and share with you um, some of the ways which we're trying to actually look at those interactions and assess how important they are. So um, my lab has a very translational approach. So we work really closely with our clinical colleagues across lots of different uh, trusts, in particular, in particular the pediatricians um, led by Sejal Siglani, uh, Phil Molyneux and Palav Shah and Oxy Salman. And we're really interested in uh, immunity and the lungs across the life course. So with our pediatric colleagues, then we look at the um, cells and lungs um, of, of children who have, have um, severe asthma and then, um, and then adults who also may have had lifelong um, asthmatic disease and we're really interested in immune regulation and then tissue repair, tissue repair so how the lungs recover from, um, from uh, inflammatory episodes. And in conjunction with that, we also use a range of different cell um, and mouse models that allow us to form mechanistic experiments. And by that, I mean that we, we are able to, to, to change things. So we, we can block pathways. If we identify something in, in the human tissue, we can sort of block it and see whether it's important or not. We can label particular cells to see how they move and change. And we can also manipulate the diet or the genetics or the microbiome of the mouse just to change things and see how that's important. So in particular, we've been looking at different ways to image those interactions. Um, I know that we, you know, patients can have CT scans, but that doesn't give us very deep cellular resolution. We can look at histology, looking at tissue sections, but again, it's difficult to get 3D resolution. And so what we've been doing is, is looking at precision cut lung slices. And these are um, lung slices which are cut thicker um, and they allow us to actually image in a 3D orientation so we can look at the interactions of a number of different cells together. 
So if we think of the lung here, this is um, we can section through a lobe of this lung, and here is a is is one lobe of a, of a mouse lung. And you can see that we've stained the blood vessels pink and the airway here is in, in green. And this is just a cross section of one of these breathing tubes that's going into the airway. And we can see all the way through the through the lung itself. Um, and then we can um, stain for different uh, cells. So here we've stained leukocytes, so cells of the immune system in, in red. And then the smooth muscle is in blue. And you can see here that here we can pick up the airways, the breathing tubes, as well as blood vessels. And then we can look at those and see how they change during disease. So here, this is just a, um, um, we can use a mouse where we tag or label um, cells in the mouse different colours. And here we've labelled all cells that produce matrix. So this is the kind of uh, tissue structural um, uh, scaffold in green. And then we've exposed these mice to house dust mite, which obviously is, is a very um, common allergen. And here the smooth muscle cells are, are blue. And then the collagen cells, are, 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 this is the evidence of tissue repair, are green. And then we can and layer on things like immune cells here um, showing up in red and this just allows us to orientate where things are in the lung and then look at those interactions and assess uh, between the different types of cells in different parts of the lung and then make estimates of how they change during the course of disease. We can look at early in disease and then we can look at later in disease and then we can try and disturb these interactions and see if it helps um, in terms of tissue pathology. And so we can, I said that these red cells were immune cells, we can look at their, um, the markers on the surface of these cells and try and identify whether they are of a particular immune um, uh, subset. So we know that eosinophils are really important in, in asthma, and we can look at um, how many of these red cells are eosinophils, or um, other cells like neutrophils, which tend to be involved in infections. And we can look at um, where, they, where they're located within the tissue and count them um, after exposure to house dust mite. And so particularly at the moment, we're focusing on these green cells, which are the cells that express collagen, the tissue scaffold structure. And we want to know how that affects then the, the, the phenotype or the, the type of um, immune cells that are there. These tissue sections are in the cells within these, these, these thick lung slices are act, not actually uh, dead, they're still alive. And so we can actually look at dynamic movement. And here this just shows a short video where this is an airway, so a breathing tube next to a blood vessel. And here we were looking at the, at the, at the cell movement of the red cells, um, sorry, the uh, green cells um, versus um, blue cells. And we, we, we identified the speed and how, how far that these green cells moved. And that allowed us to make conclusions about what those cells were actually doing in the lung during an asthmatic reaction. So in short, then we're, we're looking at these um, the, the changes um, during an immune reaction. Um, this is an airway here that's now stained in blue. Um, and then next to it, um, these is the smooth muscle here is now stained in yellow. And you can see this airway is in very close association with, with a blood vessel. So we know that the blood is brought into the lungs, the react interaction between um, the, the airways, which are bringing in um, fresh oxygenated air is really important. And we find that these immune cells stained now in pink are really close associated with both the blood vessels and the um, airways. And we think that's really important for, for what they're doing. In some ways this might be um, an important reaction to promote health in the lungs but it may also be um, uh, detrimental to the lung to lung health as in um, uh, um, in, a, in a very um, severe um, infection or in a um, episode of asthma. So that's um, all our work in mouse, but what we actually also want to do is in conjunction do to experiments or to, to, to look at the same pathways and cells, how they function in human lungs. So in collaboration with our, with our, um, uh, our uh, uh, clinical colleagues, we're able to collect cells um, from the airways and lungs of patient via bronchoscopy. So I'm sure that Sam will go into this in more detail, but basically patients are sedated and then they um, undergo um, a procedure which um, allows to put a, a tube down their, their airways and allows us to, to visualize um, the airways and look at their health, it allows us to, to, to wash out with um, saline and collect the cells which are actually in the airway lumen. And we can look at the, the, the types of cells which are in the lumen. We can also brush very gently using um, um, a small brush the sides of the airway tubes so that we can collect those cells that line the airways. And we can also take a pinch out of the airway wall to take, get a, a sample of the airway um, wall tissue. 
So what we want to do is to look at cell interactions. We want to know which cells are talking to who, so how they're doing that at a molecular level, and then also how those cells are interacting with their local environment. We want to look and see what that local, very, very um, close, intimate relationship is between where the cell is and how it affects the cell function. And you could ask why we want to do that, um, but that's to increase our basic understanding of lung disease. These are fundamental diseases. We want to why understand why so many people experience um, these type of diseases. But also by having a greater understanding of what cells are located in the lung and why they're there might help us to identify novel treatment pathways. And that ultimately will be able to help us design more personalized treatment programs for diseases like asthma, which after all look very different in one patient versus the next. We don't believe that the that, um, that, that we believe that maybe a, a better treatment pathway is actually focusing on individuals and trying to understand how we can uh, tailor their treatment. So if we think about um, what we want to do is to visualize cells um, uh, from patients with inflammation, we want to look at the crosstalk between different types of cells in the tissue. Um, we want to understand at a molecular level what cells, um, what, what types of cells are located. Um, in the in the disease lung compared to a healthy lung. And then we also want to have an understanding of the, 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 um, the transcriptional profile. So what's going on in the nucleus of that cell, which allows it to, to function in a particular way during disease. So just focusing on epithelial cells for a moment, these are the cells that line the airway wall, and we thought they were just a physical barrier that separated the external environment here in blue versus the internal body um, tissue environment in pink. Um, but actually, we now realise that they're really important for responding to, um, to viruses here. They produce mucus. Um, they can, with their little hairs on their surface, they can help us get rid of particles that we breathe in via this mucus escalator. So this is when you have more mucus and you're able to cough them up and get rid of um, particles, but they also produce um, lots of mediators. So these proteins, which will allow us to hopefully get rid of, um, get rid of viruses and bacteria. So we can um, collect and expand these epithelial cells. We can collect them from the patient by brushing the airway wall and then culturing them in the lab in, um, in, in, a, in a process called tissue culture. So we can put these cells in a, in a, a plastic tray. These are very small, but we can put them in um, and give them nutrients in a sort of liquid medium to try and represent how they would um, survive in the body. And when the cells, they, the cells respond to that and they, they, um, they divide and then they spread themselves out into, a, into a, a, a single layer into this tissue plate. And when we take away the, um, the top layer of the liquid, that's this, this, that is a signal for them to start differentiating or expanding and growing to be the different types of cells, the ones that produce mucus, the ones that have, have, have little hairs on their surface, and the ones that produce different mediators. And then we can use those for experiments. So this is just a tissue section um, where we've, we've taken cells, grown them in culture, and then we can label them with different markers in different colors so we can identify who's there. So these are the different types of the, the kind of foot soldiers, the, the, the basal epithelial cells, which are the ones that provide a first layer. Then we can stain them for mucus. So we know that these cells um, generate mucus producing cells. And then also ones that produce the little hairs or cilia. And we can, so they, they, they look like a, um, a well differentiated layer. So it looked like an airway wall um, in, that we can see in tissue sections. And we can stimulate them with different um, either viruses, allergens or pollutants and see how they respond. And this is just a, a, um, a study we did recently comparing epithelial uh, cells from um, pediatric um, patients and how they responded to either influenza or to SARS-CoV-2 just to see how and why um, children didn't um, get as um, severe responses to um, uh, during COVID-19 um, to adults. And then we can cut other, um, a newer technique is to um, collect section through a, a section to look at, this is a human um, position cut lung slice where we can look at the resident um, macrophages, um, the kind of phagos or cells that are, are, are patrol the airways and the local um, epithelial cells. And we able to now look at the within a particular biopsy and look at and, and by staining it and then taking um, those cells, we can look at uh, genes and in individual cells in a particular area of the lung um, and, and to, able to get an idea of, of how they, these vary during different diseases. 
And just right at the end, at the moment, I said we wanted to look at um, uh, different set immune cells within the lung. There's lots of different immune cells. And we have been restricted to may maybe only looking at three or four in one tissue section at a time. But novel imaging methods now um, let us look at up to 35 different um, markers. So we're able to identify cells in, a re in really high resolution to try and understand even the subtypes of individual immune cells and how they might vary in different lung disease. This is just comparing into interstitial lung disease with asthma, um, although we can still see there's an ep epithelial stain in, in blue and, um, and pink, we can see that there are various different aspects of that um, that's changing. Unfortunately, our eyes don't be, uh, can't see 37 colours at once, so we, we can have to build up um, a kind of multiple image of what cell is there, but we can stain each, um, each um, cell with all these different, each tissue with all these individual markers, and then it will allow us to make calculations of which cell is talking to, to another cell and how that might relate to disease phenotype. And there's the very, my very last picture is that the one particular aim that we're making at the moment is to try and look and see how nerves um, uh, in, uh, change in the lungs after severe asthma. And so here we've just labeled the nerves in red and the airway cells are in here in green. You're looking down a breathing tube. This is air and this is the lung tissue section. All the immune cells are stained in blue, but I think you can see that the, um, the neurons or the nerve cells are actually in really close contact with the epithelium and, um, and actually reach uh, through it into the outside environment. And we think this may be why people um, get irritant, irritated and, and cough um, and they maybe um, get worsened asthma in times when there's higher pollution. And we want to look at that at a molecular level to see if we can try and prevent it. So my take home message is that there's lots of cells which um, may be resident in, in the lungs, um, but also may kind of move to the lungs and, and are transported to the lungs if something um, is with it happens when we breathe in. Those, the communication between those different cells is really important um, and their, their crosstalk or their communication is important for the outcome of lung disease. So it's very important to know who your neighbours are and what they're talking about. And these could be influenced by sort of external factors such as pollution and um, what you're breathing in, but also very local factors. In fact, this really local environment um, will also influence this crosstalk or this chat. So I just want to thank everybody in the lab who's actually done the work. Of course, it's not me. As Edwin um, uh, said, I'm supported by the Wellcome Trust. Um, none of my work would be um, possible without um, uh, my collaborations with uh, my clinical colleagues. And then Franz Pater, Shweta and Richard Hewitt and Will Traves um, generated the images that you um, saw today. So thank you.